Welcome back to the second video in the series of Optimizing Destiny 2. My name is Macabre, and today I'll be taking you through knowing your enemy inside Destiny 2. Before we get started today, if you enjoy the content, a like and possibly even subscribing down below would be greatly appreciated. Now let's jump into it. You may ask yourself, what does this man mean when he says, know your enemy? And to that, I have a simple answer. Know the enemy type, know what necessary weapons to deal with for that type and which weapon mods are going to be most effective. That's right, this video will be broken into three portions to allow for easy following and replayability when needed. The first of the three is knowing the enemy type, and this is by far one of the easiest things to think about. This entails two major questions, as well as kind of a third that we'll touch on briefly. The first of the two major questions is what enemy race is in this activity? There are technically six different enemy races in Destiny 2, listed as such, Cabal, Fallen, Vex, Hive, Taken, and Scorn, with the last two kind of being copycat races. Knowing each race and every ad type that is in that race will allow for a better understanding of the activity you will be in. Now I can totally make a guide breaking down each of these, but I think that this is better understood with playing the game. Knowing the destination kind of is going to give you a cheat sheet to knowing what types of enemies you might encounter. I'll briefly list out the destinations and the enemy types found there. Just keep in mind that there are some exceptions based on the activity you might be loading into. The EDZ has enemies such as Taken, Cabal, and Fallen. The Cosmodrome has Fallen and Hive. Nessus has Vex, Cabal, and Fallen. The Moon has Vex, Fallen, and Hive. The Dreaming City, a rare exception, has Scorn, Taken, and Hive. However, if you are loading simply into the patrol zone on the Dreaming City, keep in mind that this is going to change weekly on a three-week rotation, with week one being Scorn, week two being Hive, and week three being Taken. Europa has Fallen and Vex, Savathun's Throne World has Hive and Scorn, and Neptune has Cabal and Vex. Lastly, as I wanted to include another special exception, is Eternity. Dares of Eternity is its own destination, and it includes every race except for the Scorn. Now keep in mind, this is purely RNG based unless you are running it on Legend difficulty. Knowing the enemy race allows for a few important insights, the first of which is to know how to better prepare defensively. Each race has a set of elemental damage that they deal, and knowing this allows for the appropriate damage resistant mods to be placed on your chest piece prior to the activity. This once again will come with some time playing the video game. Some great examples that are worth knowing, however, are that Scorn Grenades are void, and in some endgame content, they are most definitely a large threat. Another example is that in Fallen activities, where Fallen ships such as Skiffs and Catches are located, there is arc damage that occurs, and from these two ships, it is equally as deadly as the Scorn Grenades. That supplementary third question I had talked about earlier is looking into the splitting of ads inside the activity you're working in. Some activities have more than one ad race present and it will change and it'll determine on whether you need to run one resistance over another. So keep this in mind as you're looking into the activity you might be starting. The second major question occurs around the difficulty of the activity. And that question is, are there going to be champions? The, this question's answer may possibly end up restricting your loadout and cause certain weapons to be unusable or less desirable for that activity. This will lead directly into the sep second topic of the video, appropriate weapon choice for the activity you are in. However, before moving on, we'll discuss each champion type and the races that they can be. Overload champions are notorious for their teleportation and shooting at an increased RPM. Stunning typically requires a number of shots before they will cease to have infinite health regen. For a large number of weapons, this is almost half of the magazine. Overload champions can be Fallen, Vex, Taken, or Scorn, depending on the activity you are in. Barrier champions are the slowest and most sluggish of the three. They often have limited movement and output a large amount of burst damage. They are damaged as normal until they put up a shield, which when pierced will stun them for a few seconds. Barrier champions may be Fallen, Vex, Cabal, or Hive, once again, depending on the activity you are in. Unstoppable champions are the last champion type in this current moment. Onstops are the aggressive champion type and frequently get up in your business. They need to be stunned with the appropriate weapons or abilities before good damage can be dealt to them. Onstops may be Scorn, Cabal, Hive, or Taken, 
once again, depending on the activity you are in. Now let's move on to the second portion of this video, and that is knowing which weapons to use. Limiting your loadout is specific to two main reasons in Destiny 2. The first is that weapons are effective based on the surge for that specific activity, and the second is that each weapon is going to fill the desired role. Now, I'm going to very briefly list and explain very, very minimally, but there are different categories for each weapon. Just know that in today's video, we're only going to be focusing on champion stunning weapons, but the general categories are add clear, damage, champion stuns, utility, and then a general miscellaneous category. There are a number of ways to stun champions, and this video will be covering both weapons and armor pieces, as well as talking briefly about the subclass verbs. Now the game allows for a very easy way to ensure that the player knows how each champion can be dealt with. In the player's inventory, directly to the right of their weapons, there's an infographic that easily explains each of the subclass verbs and weapons that are capable of stunning champions. Keep in mind that each weapon is going to change, allowing for different champion stuns from season to season. This can be explored in the infographic once that specific champion mod has been purchased from the seasonal artifact. If you're looking for a general idea of what in total is available each season, go to the seasonal artifact and it'll more, than often than not, more often than not be found in the first column as well as some occasional in the fourth and third column of the seasonal artifact as well. Let's begin talking about the weapons and we will talk a little bit in depth more than what we have about some of the other things. Inside Destiny 2, the weapons that are capable of stunning champions change from season to season, as I said earlier. This is based on the seasonal artifact. For the purposes of today's video, we'll only be talking about the way each champion is stunned via a weapon, and then briefly touch on a few fan favorites that we've seen throughout the seasons. Very quickly, I'll be listing the exotic weapons that have intrinsic champion capabilities towards the end of this weapon section. Let's start with Barrier Champions. Barrier Champions are damaged as normal with any weapon, but at a certain health threshold, a shield will be put up requiring an anti-barrier weapon to be used in order to take that shield down and stun the champion. A fun fact here is that while the shield is up, the Barrier Champion will regenerate health, but in order to prevent any of this, any sort of damage used, or any sort of damage the champion takes via using an anti-barrier weapon will stop the health regen. After a certain amount of damage is dealt to the shield, it will be destroyed, stunning the champion, allowing you to continue to deal normal damage. Let's move on to overload champions. Overload champions are the most annoying and require a stun in order for them to be dealt with whatsoever. While both barrier champions and unstoppable champions have a number of ways to be dealt with in the speedrunning and low man communities that are kind of unique. Overload champions, however, we don't have that luxury. They require continuous shooting with a weapon in order for the overload champion to be stunned. If they are not stunned, the overload will regenerate health faster than any output of damage we have in the game currently. Once stunned, you have a brief period where the overload champion will not regenerate its health. Take full advantage of this. Keep in mind, with any overload weapon, even if it is based on the seasonal artifact mods, or if it's something intrinsic like Le Monarch, which we'll talk about later, Continuously shooting a champion with this weapon will allow for that champion to never regenerate its health. This is very important when dealing with overload champions. As I said before, they are the most annoying. Let's move on, and lastly, unstoppable champions. These champions will take reduced damage until they are stunned. This requires an unstoppable weapon mod. This is very unique compared to the other two. The other two allow for continued shooting in order for it to have any effect. With unstoppable champions, you need to be aiming down sights for a brief period before shooting at that champion. This is something that takes a little bit of time and there's been a number of bugs and they can be a little difficult to deal with as well. So oftentimes people will use the subclass verbs to deal with unstoppable champions. So now that we talked a little bit about the uh, each type of champion and how they're stunned and how the weapons interact, uh, let me very briefly talk about fan favorites of weapon types to deal with each champion. Now keep in mind, I'm only going to be talking about the legendary versions of these, more or less, right? But also, these are only based on the seasonal artifact weapons, right? So if there's an exotic or a subclass verb that is more well-liked in the community, like Radiant and 
slug shotgun per se to deal with barrier champions. That's not included on this because it's very, very specific. I'm talking strictly seasonal artifact mods. Starting with barrier, we have auto rifles and pulse rifles as two of the fan favorites for that, which is kind of funny and we'll get into later. Barrier champs are dealt with a number of other ways and very rarely do you strictly use what the seasonal artifact has to offer. Overload, we have both bows and LMGs, kind of unique. This is the only champion type that has a heavy weapon specific, um, which is kind of cool. Bows also very, very good for overload. They stun on that first shot, which is amazing. And then unstoppable, we have glaive, fusion, and grenade launchers. Now the grenade launchers is both heavy and special when it's on there. That's how it works. Same with fusion. It's both f uh, fusion rifles and linear fusion rifles, um, but kind of once again, kind of funny that there's no primaries on this one, um, and it's like all special and heavy weapons. Now that we've mentioned some of the fan favorites of the legendary weapon mods that stun champions, I figured I would move on to a couple of the exotic weapons that have intrinsic champion stunning capabilities. One thing that I will not be talking about this in, in this video is how a number of exotic weapons have subclass verbs attached and are technically capable of stunning champions. These weapons I'll be listing the weapons that I will be listing will have the capability to stun champions without the need of any subclass verbs. So keep this in mind, and if you are interested in what subclass verbs are tied to weapons and how those affect champions, be on the lookout for the next video, because that's where I'm going to be talking a lot about that. Let's start with barrier weapons. Barrier weapons that are both exotic and have the intrinsic barrier perk are Wishender and Arbalest being by far the two most used, followed by Revision Zero. Ariana's Val, and Lament. Overload has three options, all very equally used, Laminarch, Divinity, and Thunderlord. And as for Unstoppable, realistically, there's only one option, although there is kind of a second that has this like cult-like following, it feels like. Let's start with Malfeasance, by far the most used exotic, specifically for Unstoppable champions. We have additionally Bastion, Devil's Ruin, and then that cult-like following, Leviathan's Breath. Keep in mind, like I said, we'll be talking about this more and how there are other weapons that play into stunning champions but via the use of subclass verbs in a future video. Moving on, we have abilities. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the abilities, but I'm not going to go into too much depth of how they are used, but I'm going to talk about one very important thing that a lot of people don't know or oftentimes forget. So let's start with the abilities here. It is something that is a little bit newer and maybe some returning players or brand new players don't even know about. But there's a number of subclass verbs that can stun each champion type, which is phenomenal. Looking at the infographic in game, we can see them. So let's start with barrier. There's radiant, unraveling, and volatile rounds. Think of this as any buff you're applying to your guardian as a whole, but more specifically to the weapons. Radiant will allow any weapon to shoot through the barrier shield. Same with Unraveling and Volatile. They're all very unique, and they're all in different subclasses. Moving on to Overload, we have Jolt, Slow, and Suppression. All these effects will stun and overload. As for Unstoppable, there is four options here. Blind, an Ignition, Shatter, and a Suspend. So once again, four unique things that you're going to be using, nothing affecting your weapons specifically. It's important to note that with all these subclass verbs, that there are many exotic weapons that play into this. And like I said, I'm not going to talk about them today, but be thinking a little bit about that. Like I said, one important thing you're going to want to remember here is some of these effects will come from weapons. For example, with Radiance and it being anti-barrier. However, let's say on the current seasonal artifact that there is Overload, SMG, and Auto Rifle, and you happen to have picked that mod up. Additionally, you're running a GM where there are barriers present, present and you knew that you were going to run a Radiant build, so you weren't going to have to worry about it. But your Auto Rifle is what you're using to try and stun a barrier champion while you're Radiant, and you're curious as to why it's not working. Well, simply put, your auto rifles mod coming from the seasonal artifact is going to override that radiant anti-barrier. Another very common one we have this season is the fact that we have overload machine gun. 
However, with void builds, something like commemoration is very, very common and volatile rounds. However, volatile rounds will not pierce the barrier shield if you have purchased the overload machine gun mod. Just a couple things to keep in mind as you're going through these. So now that we've covered a little bit about how subclass verbs interact with different champion types, let's talk very, very briefly about the exotic armor pieces that have intrinsic champion stunning capabilities. Now I'm only going to briefly list the exotic armor pieces and maybe talk one or two sentences of each before I move on to the next, purely because this topic will be covered in another video coming up. Each class has one armor piece currently in the game that deals with champions and has intrinsic champion capabilities. Keep in mind, there are a number of exotic armor pieces that interact with subclass verbs or subclasses in general that allow for champion stunning. Warlocks have secant filaments. These are a pair of exotic boots that have overload champion capabilities. And this is only via empowering rifts and found on the Void subclass, if I recall correctly. Next, we have Titans, who have a pair of arms called Second Chance. Second Chance has intrinsic barrier champion stunning capabilities, and this is via the shield throw, once again, on the Void subclass. For Hunters, you have a legend or an exotic chest piece called Lucky Raspberry, and this has overload via arc bolt grenades. Now keep in mind, this one in and of itself is kind of different because every arc grenade can have intrinsic overload, so it's kind of a waste of a chest piece, but like I said, we'll talk about that more in the next video. Now let's move on to the third and final topic, and this one is going to be very, very brief because once again, it'll be explained in way more depth in an upcoming video, but it's talking about weapon mods. We're going to talk about five specific, and like I said, I'm not really going to break this down a whole lot. And if you really want to see the nitty gritty and have very, very detailed explanation, I recommend you go watch another uh, video on this. I do not have one currently. I can make one if there's interest, but Fallout Plays has an amazing video talking about this that he put out, I think about a year and a half ago. So go check that out if that's something you're really interested in learning more about. But this video is simply gonna break it down into five different options for every weapon. And I'm gonna tell you what each option is and when and where it should be used. Let's start with boss spec. Pretty self-explanatory. It's going to give increased damage against bosses, but it also gives increased damage against vehicles. This increased damage amount is 7.7%, and you'll see that across the board with almost all of these specs. Major spec is the next one, and then once again, 7.7. It's against any elites, which are more often than not your yellow bars, but additionally, it is against champions. So there is a difference between these two mods, and we'll talk about that later, but Major spec specifically against elites and champions. The last of the normal ones, in my opinion, we have is minor spec. Minor spec is still 7.7%, but it's against your rank and file combatants. Essentially, think of this as any time you see a red bar or an enemy that has no cool name above it, essentially. This is the time you're going to use minor spec. Now we have our two special exceptions, taken spec and adept big ones. Let's start with taken spec. Taken spec is the only one on this list that is not 7.7%, it's 10%, and it's against all Taken enemies. So anytime you're loading into a Taken activity or an activity where Taken enemies may or may not be present, recommend putting this on a couple of your weapons. Lastly, Adept Big Ones goes back to that 7.7, and this is against any and all enemy types. So the essentially you're combining your minor spec, your major spec, and your boss spec, and the only thing that beats it out is Taken spec. So here's the takeaway from the weapon mod portion in today's video. If you're in an activity with Taken enemies, then Taken spec is the only thing you should be using on those weapons. Additionally, if that weapon is adept and you are not facing any Taken, then adept big ones should always be used as it encompasses all enemy types. Beyond this, the appropriate boss, major, and minor spec should be used depending on that weapon's use inside of whatever activity you are doing. For example, a primary weapon that is only going, to be see, only going to see play against your red bars and general ad clear should only be utilizing minor spec, while something like a fusion rifle or grenade launcher that is used to help deal damage against champions in a GM nightfall should be using major spec, not boss spec. 
you typically your heavy weapon will revolve around using boss spec for boss damage. However, if you're in something like a GM, major spec may be more preferred. It's really important to know the differences that each spec offers and when you should be using one over the other. Now that is it for today's video. And I know this covered a lot of different topics and a bunch of things that are very, very important in knowing your enemy. Keep an eye out as this series will be continuing and the next one will be exploring weapons, armor, and exotics. I'll probably break it into three parts as to cut down the length just a little bit. But those videos will be covering what is considered meta-relevant or sees a decent amount of playtime in each of those specific categories. Giving a newer player or a player that's interested in getting into more of the end game of Destiny 2 a better idea of where they should focus their time in firing for loot. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new. With that, I got nothing else to say except for get back to grinding, you crazy guardians.